In several videos, Mystical Forest, a.k.a. Nick, um, asked us to provide him with evidence of evolution. Um, by assuming, I, I'm assuming by that he means evidence of common descent um, as opposed to actual evidence of uh, natural selection, which he seems to accept, at least in part. Um, and I started thinking to myself, you know, if I were to try to provide this evidence um, to Nick or anybody else, this is this is a absolutely not a Nick video. This is just um, I was just explaining where the idea for this series, hopefully a series, comes from. And I started thinking about different uh, types, you know, different evidences of common descent. Ones that are particularly irrefutable, um, if you actually take a look at the evidence. Ones that where there's no other answer outside of possibly umphalos, meaning the, the, if you do not accept these as common descent, then the alternative is that God deliberately designed things to look like they evolved or had a common ancestor. Um, you know, the trickster God concept. Um, so I started thinking about, you know, my, one of my very favorites, and I'd made a video about this in part, I briefly mentioned it, about the uh, vagus and recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now, the, what's fascinating about this is that it, um, it is clear evidence of, of either really, really shitty design or common descent. So, um, now this, what I'm going to see behind me, you notice my skulls and everything are covered. I have, um, my wife for Valentine's Day bought me a whiteboard. Now, Valentine's Day, whiteboard, that's love, okay? She knows, she knew what I really, really wanted. And I've cut p paper covering up because I spent some time making illustrations. So hopefully um, I can keep this straight, keep this, and make some sense out of it, explaining exactly why. In order to make sense out of this, we're going to have to do a little bit of background into fish anatomy and circulation. Um, so uh, forgive my crude drawings. I'm not an artist, uh, but I'm going to try to, hopefully, it'll, it'll be clear enough to make some sense. Okay, so just just real quick parts here. Uh, I've color coded just so we can keep it straight. So blue is a uh, nervous system. This is sp specifically the vagus nerve, and that's the brain. Now this is not the same as the spinal cord. The spinal cord I didn't draw as separate. Okay, now this vagus nerve uh, branches four times. Um, this is the f first branch to the fourth branch. Uh, here's the heart. Now in fish, um, it's a quite a bit different than in uh, than tetrapods. Uh, the heart pumps blood. It goes forward, um, circulates around. This is the uh, this is called the ventral aorta. This is the dorsal aorta, and they are connected by these these various shunts. Okay, these branches. Um, each of these branches passes through the gills. Um, in fish, in in the jawed fishes, you see there's this. You can't I don't know if you can see the numbers or not. This is three, four, five, and six. Uh, corresponding to three, four, five, and six, the green being the uh, parts of the gill arches themselves. The in in vertebrate in this would de develops from the pharyngeal pouches. Okay. Now the first two, the reason that one and two aren't here is that they form the jaws in in ourselves as well as in the bony fishes, the jawed fishes. Um, so the green represents the muscles, bone, and such, the tissue of these these gill arches. All right. And we got to keep our eye on those. Keep our eye on this uh, fourth branch of the vagus nerve. Uh, this this is called the, the in in us this is the recurrent laryngeal, but right now it's just the fourth branch. And so what it does um, is this branch goes and connects to the sixth gill arch in fish, okay? Um, so it this is what inner, innervates that particular gill arch, all right? Um, also here just to note uh, this here would be this blood vessel in fish goes to uh, the reedy mirabilis, which is the organ that fish use to fill the swim bladder, and that's kind of also important. So, okay, now looking at amphibians, uh, th hopefully this shows up. It's not—I didn't make it as large. I don't—it doesn't show up as well. Um, so again, here's the brain. We have this vagus nerve. Uh, the first three branches of it go into. They innervate different portions of the head region or th and uh, neck region. Uh, this fourth one, okay, remember as in the fishes, this fourth, um, the fourth branch of the vagus went down and innervated the sixth gill arch. Okay. Um, now in amphibians, 
they, they don't have gills as adults. They have gills when they're juveniles, um, when they're when they're larvae, tadpoles or newts. Uh, but when they mature into the adult form, they metamorphose. Uh, this, the sixth gill arch, migrates down and becomes the larynx. Now, if you're probably aware, amphibians have uh, fairly sophisticated vocal apparatus. If you've ever heard frogs at night, um, and so this 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 branch, now called the recurrent laryngeal, goes around just like it did in the fish, around this dorsal aorta, um, going through here and then innervates that the larynx. Okay. One thing that's important to note here um, is that this section of the of the uh, artery here um, corresponds to this right here, the sixth the sixth aortic branch. Um, now becomes it it start, starts serving a slightly different function in that it connects two sections from the pulmonary artery, okay, or connects the um, aorta to the pulmonary artery in amphibians, and that gets to be really important later on. All right, finally now we're looking at mammals. Uh, and again, it's a very similar pattern than we saw in the amphibians, uh, but there's been a whole lot of changes in the blood vessels, but that, I'm not going to get into all the details on that because it's not really important to this, um, and I would actually have to look it up because it's been years since I took vertebrate anatomy. But, okay, again, we have these first three branches of off the vagus uh, that go to, they, they do all sorts of, they innervate lots of functions in the, in the head and throat region. But this fourth branch now leaves the brain, Okay. Um, goes back, goes around this again. This is the, the ductus arteriosus. Um, that connects the pulmonary artery to the aorta. Now, in mammals, this is what's really cool. In mammals, this ductus arteriosus closes off. Um, it, it's non-functional in adult mammals. In embryonic mammals, in fetal mammals, um, it's open um, because what it does is it allows blood to flow through the body bypassing the lungs because remember if you're a fetus um, inside of you know growing up inside of a uh, its mother it's not breathing so it doesn't need the lungs it, in fact having blood go to the lungs is just a waste so this bypasses that and allows blood to flow through the body um, receiving oxygen from the from the placenta not receiving oxygen from the lung um, again this is a useless structure in adult but what's cool about it is that this um, ductus arteriosus is the developmentally we can we can watch it develop um, as embryos grow um, develops from this sixth aortic branch that we see in fishes again the ductus arteriosus in amphibians um, that remains open uh, so this goes here so this nerve goes around this so it goes from the brain this fourth branch down into the chest around this aortic arch specifically going around the ductus arteriosus back up again and into the larynx, which is in the, the neck of vertebrates, um, when instead it could just go right from here. Now, people have often tried to find a function for this, you know, a lot like, you know, creationist kind of thing, looking for a function for this, you know, making all kinds of suggestions. All of them fall apart. There's no reason for this. A designer would have put this nerve going from here right to the larynx where it goes. So, yes, why does, why does it go this way? And in fact, um, with heart surgeries and such like that, this is actually a huge pain in the ass. Um, damaging this nerve is really, really bad. Um, so doctors actually have to work around this nerve. And if you've, um, I'll put a link in the, it's not the sidebar anymore, I guess it's the bottom bar, um, which I hate, by the way. Um, this, this, of a, of a d dissection of a giraffe, where it shows how far this goes. Remember, you've seen a giraffe's neck. They're really long. And this goes all the way down into the chest cavity from the, from the head and then all the way back up to close to next to the brain. Um, and the reason that this is is that because there's no intermediate step to get from here to here that would allow this to not go that pathway, if that makes sense. Okay, Evolution's not going to evolve cutting this nerve and then reattaching it somewhere else. Evolution follows the path. Um, a great analogy somebody made uh, on EVC forum was if you picture you're mowing your lawn with an electric lawn mower, okay, and as you're mowing the lawn, you're going around trees and stuff like that with, a, with an extension cord. Now, a designer would unplug the lawn mower and replug it in, not wrapped around stuff. A, evolution, however, doesn't do that because it can't unplug the cord, it can't unplug the nerve. So, what evolution's solution to that? Um, is just to extend it longer and longer and longer as it needs to be. Okay, I hope that made sense. Um, maybe it cleared up a few things. 
Um, it's again, it's a great example of common descent. It's one of those uh, p- problems if you look at the, the design of the recurrent laryngeal nerve in mammals, and looking at it and asking yourself why is it as it is. Uh, creationism cannot explain why that is, um, but evolution can. Uh, theory of common descent explains it very well, and we can actually watch this um, as these things, as as what studying amphibians as they develop, watching the it's called on, a science of ontology, and watching this, uh, seeing where these nerves go at each stage in development, and then looking at mammals and looking at mammal development and seeing where these nerves go, and it becomes really clear that this is the way it is because it has to be that way based on its derivation, where it came from. So, anyway, thanks.